I'm Dave Riccio, and he is Matt Allen, and we are KTR Car Guys, heard here every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you got car questions, we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-5827. KTAR. You can also text us at 411-923. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, fact or fiction, of course we're taking your text and phone calls, and what should you expect from warranty on your auto repair? <laughs> you know, Dave, this comes up a lot. I mean, when we're talking to a customer, we, we always tell them what what the warranty is that they should expect with with our repairs when we're done. But I thought this was a great topic for many reasons. We were at the Better Business Bureau this month doing our, our uh, it's not arbitration, but mediation. Dave and I are part of a, a panel that uh, mediates repair complaints between the shop and the consumer. When nobody just really knows what the right thing to do is, we just we help figure that out with amongst a group of our peers as well. But then I had a – my name was mentioned in a Facebook post where – a gal said, um, good, "Good or bad?" By good, the way. Okay. good. Yeah, just just a, a friend said, "Hey, ask Matt Allen. He went to Shadow Mountain High School with me, and uh, he has a shop. He would know." And, and the question that came up was, "said You know, I, the gist of it was, I had my fuel pump put in three weeks ago, and the shop, the guy at the shop said, oh, by the way, you'll have to go to the dealer to have the repair finished or have it registered or something like that because we can't do that here.'" Well, then they went on their vacation, and, and now here we are th only three weeks later, and we found that there's a problem with the repair. So she goes back to the repair shop, and they said, oh, you should have come back sooner. There, there's, not, there's no warranty. And I thought, what? That's well, there's crazy. two problems I hear when I hear you saying that. Uh, three weeks later, there's no warranty. That's obviously a problem. We're going to talk about some base expectations for what you should expect. The other problem is that we did the repair, but now you got to take it to the dealer. And that's a breakup of responsibility, and that's a total method for disaster. And, <clears throat> and I know there's some shops that do it that way. They, they have not invested in the capital and the equipment to do everything they need to do. But we, we did bolted something on. Now it's got to go to the dealer now when there's a problem. Whose issue is it? Well, and I can understand that happening at times, but but you're right, Dave. There are there there was a couple problems there, and, and um, I guess if it was my shop, if you're at Virginia Auto Service and we can't complete the repair, you may or may not know that we're just going to handle it. Right, you're going to get it done, whether you could take it to the dealer. Yeah, it's just I'm going to call you. I'm going to tell you this is what needs to be done. And this is how much it is. That's not your problem. If I can't fix your car, and that was my response to this Facebook post, I said. A couple things. If the shop is doesn't have the equipment to complete the repair, I don't know that I wanted to even start the repair. Or at least they should see that whole thing all the way through so that you know you got a completed repair, not just a portion of a repair. When you and I were first talking about the Facebook post, they referred to the shop as favorable. You know, hey, we like them. They've been good to us. Until Until now. there's a problem. And, and everybody's smiling and great until there's a problem. Anytime, you know, I go talk to a sales guy, he sells me something, and you know what I sign up? I'm like, yeah, these guys are great. You know, and then something goes wrong, and they, they, they disappear, you know? And so that's... <clears throat> that seems like the American way more and more. But, you know, you don't know how good your shop is until there's a problem. And there's always a problem, and don't think there's not. And I have this statistic that I believe myself, but you know what? There is not a panel or somebody said this is what it is. But auto repair, whether you're going to an independent or to a dealership or to whatever it may be, you know, the best of products and services experience a failure from time to time. And I would put you know, I know the parts out of the box have a failure rate of 2%. So now we have the human factor where we're, we're installing the part. So now are we talking about 5%? And people would, would probably disagree with me. But I would say as a whole, auto repair ha has issues 5% of the time. It's not uncommon. You guys have all had auto repair. You've all picked it up, drove it away, and you're like, uh, this isn't right. You know, and you got to go back to the shop and, and say it. So the base expectations, most Reasonable established shops offer a 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, warranty, and that's parts and labor. And what I deem as warranty is you don't have to spend more money to get fixed what didn't go right. Warranty is you bring me the keys, I take care of it, 
you don't spend any more money to get your car back. That's what I would consider warranty. Now, there's some chains out there that are typical. Anything comes back, you got to get some extra money from them. Don't, d- don't fall for that. It well, should be, you know, yeah, <clears throat> you're I, starting to disagree. What, what's your thought? Well, there, there are some times when uh, it's so subjective. So the alternator goes bad. You put an alternator on the car, and, and then six months or nine months later it fails. That's pretty easy. We just put another alternator on, okay? Not a big deal. Right. You're not paying anything. Well, maybe we have a situation where, I don't know, let's make up a, a leak. We fixed a hose six months ago, and then come back because uh, the car is overheating again. Well, you may have the same symptom, but your repair may not be under warranty. So Yeah, uh, one was know. because the thermostat was bad, so that may have been the overheating issue, and now one's because the heater hose is bad. Right. And so you fixed a component within the cooling system, but you didn't rebuild the whole cooling system. So that would make sense, but that would be a situation. So sometimes that does come up. But what I'm what I'm referring to is when sometimes I'll say, oh, yeah, but, you know, you're going to need to do this, that, and the other. Well, Shouldn't that have been included in the original repair? That's what I'm talking about is when they try and give you the add-ons because they're so locked into a profit model, they can't just take care of people. So the base average is 12 months, 12,000 mile warranty. We joke at our front counter. We tell the customer, hey, don't worry, you got the taillight warranty. So as soon as we can't see our taillights anymore, <laughs> we're off the hook, you know? So, and then that fine print on that invoice right there says, you absolutely can't hold us responsible for anything. You know, we joke about that, but, you know, minimum 12 months, 12,000 is reasonable. And that's not on a used part. That's where, you know, hey, it's a, it's, this is is going to be most general repairs. Stuff you take your car into the shop, they fix it. It's usually the same day or the next day that you could get your car back. Now that, you know, I see more and more shops, even like you at Virginia Auto Service, going to a two-year, 24,000-mile warranty, which is starting to become more of a standard. Well, starting. I mean, we went to two-year, 24,000-mile 10 years ago. I mean, we and some of it is marketing, and 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 that's what I want to kind of get into. Twelve year, twelve months, twelve thousand miles. That's a no brainer, so to speak. That that's what you should expect. Any any good repair should last that and long. And you might actually be surprised. I won't mention it. There's some national chains that give ninety days. I think that's that's unacceptable. But you then you can buy up to the year. Right. So, right. Uh, so you get your twelve months. Twenty four. Twenty four is a really good warranty. Uh, I, I think, and like you said, Dave, a lot of shops are going that way. A lot of the bumper-to-bumper radio shops are that way. Two-year, 24000 Start getting to 336 nah, Well, let me, talk, let, let, me, like? let me talk about the other one. This is the, uh, the lifetime warranty. Okay. And I specifically think about it on brakes because there's a, a couple of brake chains that say, hey, we're going to guarantee your brakes for life, pro rata. And that's a, that's a word they say really fast in the advertisement, pro rata. And that's pro-rated, I guess is what that means. And I really haven't combed in and read the warranty and all that stuff. But from what I hear, you know, the the pads themselves have a lifetime warranty on them. But the labor, and usually when you go back in, wow, your brake pad's worn out because your calipers are worn or this is that and the other, and you're still pulling your wallet out. You know, so lifetime on a wear component is what I would consider to be unreasonable. And and you mentioned it. it just doesn't make sense that it's going to last forever. How can you guarantee it forever and stay in business? If it does, if it sounds too good to be true, it uh, is. What was it, the rest of the sentence? I don't know. <laughs> it sounds be good, too good it, it, to be true. It isn't. I don't know. But well, and and you jumped over that step when you went to lifetime. And I was going to say, you start getting much beyond twenty four months, twenty four thousand. I think now you start getting into the marketing. The marketing. You, you see thirty six thousand. You see fixed for life. But then I looked. I've I've looked at some of these warranties. I've been in some peer groups of other shops. And, hey, you should go to this warranty. It's great. And I say, well, so what's the warranty? I don't want to have to have a lawyer write my warranty. My mm-hmm. warranty is two years, twenty four thousand miles. We're going to take care of you. Period. Um, so you get thirty six months. You get lifetime. Then then you're you're jumping through hoops and you're reading a lot of asterisks. Maybe, okay, maybe so you you've... have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do the other. And and I did at one point offer a warranty that was, you know, lifetime renewable warranty. So as long as you came back for service, we took care of it. it and what we found is it just it just didn't feel right. So we just we scrapped that whole program. We continued to honor the warranty. But as far as – now that's where we get into components because I sell transmissions. Mm-hmm. In a 12-month, 12,000-mile warranty that's generally will not fly with a transmission. And there's still transmission shops that offer that. But if if you're paying for a first class transmission job, 
you know, three years is pretty pretty common. Well, yeah. If we want to take it to, to we'll, we'll we'll look at the transmission element of it now. If you're getting a 12 month, twelve thousand mile warranty at the transmission shop on an overhaul, I mean on a on a good complete quality, job, on, yeah, on a complete job, a twelve month, twelve thousand mile warranty, I kind of like I liken that to the ninety day warranty of a repair shop. That's not even very good. So what you say, I mean, Tri City Transmission, it's a what three year one hundred if you three really do yep. the job right. Now there's some cases, and we do it at our shop. We have the way that we know is the best way to fix your car, and you might just say, you know, Matt, I just can't do that. I, I can't. I don't want the premium. I don't want the best alternator. Well, in that case, then we might say, okay, we're not going to warranty our labor because this is not a part that we would use. We'll still stand behind the part. You're only going to get 90 days on the labor or something like that. So there's some level of kind of negotiate for, hey, we can use a lesser part or component, but it's not going to be our, a regular two-year 24, but maybe we're gonna just going to do 12 months, 12,000. Is that okay with you? Right. You're going to save some money at the same time. We're going to save some risk because it's not that new part. Yeah, and then you have, we can talk about, you have warranties within that general big repair bill. So let's just say you go get a $1,000 repair at the shop, and you got a battery. So within that that shell of two years, 24000 your battery might have a 42-month warranty or a 30-month warranty above and beyond. Maybe certain components, like the radiator itself, might have a lifetime, although a lot of those manufacturers are getting away from that. Well, I You're, think it's shocks and struts. I see some long warranties like on a you know, Monroe Sensor Track or something like that. But yeah, yeah, it's a lifetime warranty on yeah, that thing. You, know, you still might have to pay the labor after 70,000 or 80,000 miles. So, th so there's a lot of little things that make that happen, too. When we come back, we're taking your phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You can also text us at 411-923. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR car guys, on the Bumper to Bumper radio show. <laughs> It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car. Feel free to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR, and you can text us at 411-923. Now, last weekend, Matt and I spent the entire weekend in in a room with a bunch of ASA board members. And the ASA is Automotive Service Association. And I think in the public side, I don't know if most people recognize that name, but that's something that goes on kind of, it's a trade organization. And uh, we want to speak to some of the people that are in our industry to say that, you know, in the past, ASA hasn't really been, been that big or on everybody's radar, but it is changing. And we're really Getting, finding our identity as a training organization, training for our shops. There's more mechanics than there is shop owners. So, you know, we can get together shop owners and talk about how to be better at this or that or the other. But really, I think there's a bigger problem in the industry that mechanics can be inept sometimes. And so we want to bring those guys along and school them and teach them so that it's better for our whole industry. So be looking for your ASA sales guys to be popping by here over the next couple months. And it's something you should consider to support your local industry. Yeah, I mean, we know a lot of you technicians listen, a lot, a lot of shop owners listen, and, and uh, we're just looking for the support in the trade association. It's something we desperately need to keep our, our technicians trained and keep new technicians coming into the field so we can, you know, what they say, rise all, all boats with the tide and, and, and just stay up. We've got to keep current so we can keep doing a good job for, for the customers. Well, up first this segment, we're going to go with Rick in Mesa. It looks like he's got a 1996 GMC 1500 with a 5.7 liter. Go ahead, Rick. What can we help you with today? Well, uh, uh, replace the motor in the truck with a rebuilt motor, remanufactured motor. 
and uh, I put about a thousand miles on it, and then all of a sudden I'm driving down to 17, and the motor just stops, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. I got uh, 60 pounds on a rail, um, pull the strutter cap, cap looks good, something like a timing thing, and everything looks okay. I uh, pulled out the distributor, the gear's good, uh, it's tight, everything's right. I pulled out the time chain cover, didn't jump a, a tooth or anything, and I was kind of wondering if you had any ideas. Was it was the motor locked up, or was this a crank no start situation? Crank no start. Okay. It just died while you're just died in flight driving down the road. Yes, sir. Hmm. Well, the first the well, first thing we were looking at is right away was the you know mechanical issue because we got this new motor. Hey, maybe it has something to do with the new motor. But there's so many things that support that motor in the vehicle. He said, Hey, I definitely got fuel pressure. You know, and uh, you know I've got all these you know timing things are in. Did, did he say ignition check? Yeah, I mean, we've got to have spark, we've got to have fuel, we've got to have compression, and all that has to be synchronized and happen on time. I, I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's hard to do this over the radio, Dave. I mean, if, if we um, are Rick, I mean, it's just one of those things where it, it's it's you can't really explain it. You just have to go in, and, and we know what to look for. It's like when the customer comes in the shop and says, uh, we, this is a funny conversation up at ASA, do you have the printout or what, what the computer tells you? No, the computer doesn't tell you. You have to know how to – you just have to understand what to check. And, and Rick sounds like he knows what he's doing. I mean, he's got the timing cover apart. Right. He's got things going on with this motor. I, I think, Rick, if it were me, just go back to zero. Just just put all your tools away. Clean the garage. That's where, where sometimes I get on, in a situation if i in, in over my head or just lost. Right. I just got to Control-Alt-Delete. <laughs> we got to reboot, get the garage cleaned up, get all the tools put away, and start over and go back to square one, get the thing on top dead center, make sure the engine is lined up properly, make sure it's not a timing issue, eliminate that. And just go step by step through your process. Right. Uh, it doesn't. It sounds to me more like now you've maybe gone deeper in than you needed to because it was running. It doesn't mm-hmm. sound mechanical. You lost something, obviously. Right. Rick, I wish we had some better answers for you, but it's just one of those. You you got to have the car in front of you and, and really know what. And if we were working on it, we would. I mean, we would scan it first to see if there was any message in there, like we lost uh, this sensor or that sensor. You know, things that. I mean, we can have fuel pressure, but if we don't have a pulse to the injector. Well, that's a whole nother problem. So we simplify it. We say we say fuel or spark, and I would say air fuel or spark because that's really, you know, you're talking about compression and we're getting good air into the engine. But uh, those are going to be your basics, but you got to dig deeper into each one. Just to say we have fuel pressure isn't saying that we've got it all. So thanks for the call, Rick. 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Gina in Chandler. Looks like she's got a 2001 Lexus ES300. What can we help you with, Gina? Hi, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. I have a, a car that has taken me all... I'm a realtor, and I drive... I've got 166,000 miles on it. It has saved me. I love my car. I've had so much work done on it. But now I'm at the point where I have it an issue that um, the engine light is on, which actually caused me to fail in missions. But I didn't take it to the shop yet because I went back to emissions and the light went off and then it passed. But my issue is I cannot replicate this problem when I take it to the shop. And, and I'm also a little nervous about going to the shop as a, a, sing, a female, not being very knowledgeable about cars. My problem is that um, when the light is on, it revs really, really high on the freeway. Like it goes up to to the four on the RPM, and it doesn't kick to the next gear. Okay, and, and is that pretty, pretty consistent? It'll, you can you, you can make that happen on a regular no, basis. No, I just or? it comes and it comes and goes. It'll it'll do that for maybe thirty minutes of my couple of hours worth of driving, and then it'll stop, and the light will go off, and then it's running fine, and. We get and the, everything's okay. I think I know or have a good educated guess of what might be going on with your car. We see this vehicle at the transmission shop all the time because it's not shifting up into fourth gear. So when you're on the freeway, it's revved really high. The only thing on a Lexus that I'll see that'll kick out fourth gear is when the knock sensor's having an issue. So more than likely, the fact that the check engine light came on means that there is going to be a diagnostic trouble code stored in the computer. How you got through emissions, I don't know. 
you know, because it is, that is still a code. Now, the light may come on or off, but it's real common for us to see the knock sensor code at the transmission shop for that reason. Well, and what I was going to say, Gina, if you have the first slip from when you failed emissions, it probably recorded a code, which is now not there any longer. So that's a good piece of evidence that you may have in your hand is that is that failed emissions slip. So maybe give Dave a call on, on Monday and see if that's something we can you know he can look at in the shop because you very well could have a transmission problem where, where it is, like you said, Dave, downshifting and you're just revving it. Revving it like crazy. Well, you're in Chandler, so if you want to come to Tempe to Tri-City, that's fine. But we also have got uh, automotive diagnostic specialties. Guys are really good at what they do. They will have no problem figuring out this car. And then we've also got Desert Car Care, either one of those two. And you can find them at BumperToBumperRadio.com. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Dave, throw it to me, Dave, and we're, we're up against this commercial break here. So we're going to take a quick break. Dave and I are here. We're always here every Saturday to help you with your car and answer questions. The show is really about you. It doesn't matter what our topic is. If there's something that we can help you with, Get involved with the show. Give us a call, 602-277-5827. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Greg LaFonsi of Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. Yes, we realize this is a long name to remember, but most of our customers know us simply as ADS. ADS is a family-owned and operated state-of-the-art, full-service automotive repair facility with an expert staff that has helped us earn the coveted AAA Top Shop Award as one of the best shops in the nation for the second straight year in a row. We are honored, humbled, and dedicated to providing the same level of service to you and your family. We will always strive to get it done right the first time so that you'll leave with a smile on your face after every repair or service. ADS is a bumper-to-bumper radio-approved shop with a long name but a short, simple goal. Customer satisfaction is a number one priority, and everything else takes care of itself. Just east of I-10 on Chandler Boulevard, ADS proudly serves Ahwatukee, Chandler, Tempe, Gilbert, and Southeast Phoenix. Stop by or check us out at AutomotiveDiagnosticSpecialties.com today. World class and in your own backyard. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is just around the corner at 7th Street in Virginia. And for over 19 years, they've been recognized as one of the best auto repair shops in the country. Voted best auto repair by AZ Central, A plus rated by the BBB, two year, 24,000 mile warranty, and complimentary transportation to and from your home or office. Virginia Auto. They're serious about service. See for yourself. VirginiaAutoService.com. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at MyCarHertz.com. Gas or diesel for or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Summer's winding down, Dave. It's back to school. Yep. Check out my new Scooby-Doo lunchbox, Matt. Cool, huh? Yeah, nice, Shaggy. And did you write your What My Car Did for Summer essay? (laughs) What? Is that due? Join us Saturdays, 11 to noon, for Bumper to Bumper Radio on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. And for the best car repair and body shops you can trust, it's BumperToBumperRadio.com. Drive in anxious, cruise out feeling fine with Bumper to Bumper Radio. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen and today our topic is really whatever you want to talk about but we're talking a little bit about automotive repair warranty and what some of the expectations should be you know when you paid for a car to get it fixed and it's three weeks later and they say oh it's out of warranty yeah it doesn't sit well with me but also it's Labor Day weekend, so that means everybody's loading up the Honda Odyssey, heading over to San Diego, or they're strapping the inner rubber inner tubes at the top of their car and they're headed to the Salt River, and they're going to have good fun out there. Labor Day weekend, you got to be safe, you got to buckle up, you got to you got to be extra cautious because there's one or two people out there driving with one eye closed, so their double vision goes away. If you know what I'm talking about, so be safe. You know, it never fails at my shop after a three-day weekend. My parking lot is busy because of all the people towing their boats out to the lake and the sand dunes and all that stuff. 
But I was recently talking to Kevin I-17 Collision. He said it's no different in the auto body shop business. You hear us talking about auto repair all the time, and you may not know, but Bumper to Bumper Radio, we have some really good body shops on our list that you can go to. And they really should be your first call when you get in a car accident as opposed to someone telling you, oh, take your car over here. But these are great shops that really will work hard for you. And one of the things that happens when you get a body repair is that you've got an insurance company involved, and they're paying for it in many cases. They're going to want to keep it as economical as possible, but then you've got a body shop who's serving you as the customer. So you want to make sure you're working with a body shop that really is going to do a good job of keeping everybody happy, A, the customer and the insurance company, and really work well together. And and you can find those guys right at bumper to radiocom Yeah, I mean, we've got Kevin, I-17 Collision on the west side. We've got Dave Lindgren, First Class Auto Body in South Scottsdale. John Fox, New Image Auto Body in Tempe. And these are names that you want to have. I mean, it's happening already, Dave. You don't have to go out of town to have an accident. Those of you who have been listening all morning, we have a really serious accident at 16th Street in Camelback. Uh, another one over on the west side somewhere. All, I mean, those are just two. Those are the two that made the news. Uh, probably 99% of them don't. So what, what I always tell people is, is, is go to Bumper to Bumper Radio right now or, or .com or just write it down. If you live or work on the west side or if you, you travel around in these areas, have the names of these body shops maybe programmed into your phone or write them down on a piece of paper in your glove box so you're prepared. You and know you, can, what, you can find them at Bumper to Bumper Radio.com. And one of the things we're done in this, as this website kind of grows is we've added appointment links. So you can actually make an appointment to go to a shop right there online. So whether it's just for regular general repair, there's a lot of great shops there. These are people where the, the owner of the business is there. They're offering good warranties. And it's not going to be one of those shops you go back to and they say, oh, three weeks. Oh, yeah, I know you're out of warranty. So for sure. Well, we've got some really patient holders. We're going to go with Bobby in Peoria on a 1996 Ford pickup. How can we help you? Do? Hey, good morning, gentlemen. It's not a warranty question. We know that. Uh, I've got a 1996 Ford. It's the big six-cylinder with the four-speed overdrive manual transmission. I've got a hip that's gradually getting a little worse, and I'm looking at uh, keeping the truck, and uh, I'd like to go from the manual to an automatic, which is going to be conversion. Uh, would you recommend a standard transmission shop for that, or would I have to go somewhere else? I'd recommend a classified ad to sell mm-hmm. and a classified ad to buy. Yeah, that I mean that's the that truck is designed around that manual transmission. In order to go and put an automatic transmission in it, and that truck came with a 4R100. That's the automatic transmission that came in it. But in order to remove, I mean you got to change cross members, drive shaft lengths, you've got to put a different computer in it and more than likely a completely different wiring harness. So to Matt's point, hey, you know what? If it's time to go get a vehicle with, I mean you like this truck and it's been with you, but it's it's time to it's time to move on. You will never wake up from that nightmare. <laughs> exactly. It, 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 I mean Groundhog Day. I just I, I wouldn't touch it with a ten foot pole. I I I can't imagine a shop. I had this discussion with a customer yesterday. I just can't imagine a shop that would even dive into that necessarily a, a regular shop. It's just not not something you want to do. And I was ta- having a discussion with a customer yesterday about their car. Do they just fix it all or do they just patch it? And I said. You really need to think about it, but what you do also reflects on us. Your perception, if you think you're always here getting your car fixed because you choose not to mm. fix it right, reflects poorly on us in your mind. That's the perception anyway. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be anywhere near it because I don't think you'll ever be happy. I think I think we could possibly accomplish it in my shop, but I would be exactly in, my, in Matt's boat because it, it's not going to end well for anybody. It's not going to work well. And it brings up a text that we have. I have a 1965 Plymouth uh, Valiant with a slant six. I would like to replace the automatic transmission with a newer overdrive unit. What would be a good choice? Well, you know what? <clears throat> On this vehicle here, because we're not talking about an electronic transmission necessarily, and because it's a vintage, this might make a little more sense. Now, this wouldn't necessarily be a job for your average transmission shop, but I have seen cars over in Greg's shop at Automotive Diagnostic, because this is a typical thing. We used to go 50 miles an hour on the freeway, and now we're going 75, but I've seen Greg install gear vendors, which is like an overdrive unit that you can put behind the transmission so you can get that RPM down on the freeway. So they'll do some stuff like that, and they they do 
work on vintage cars over there, and they will do some custom stuff. It's not their main staple, so don't think of automotive, di- automotive diagnostics just for that. I mean, they fix Hondas, they fix caravans, they fix anything you want to work on. But give them a call, but also do some research online because there's going to be someone that makes an adapter and a transmission that just fits what you want. So that's what I would do with that. We think Dave will go to Scottsdale and help Barbara. She's got a 2006 Honda Odyssey. Barbara, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. What can we do for you today? Yes, um, thanks for taking my call. I just have a question. Um, I took my car in in January for a regular uh, checkup with Honda and was told that uh, my CV boot was leaking and it needed to be replaced. So they replaced it. It uh, was quite expensive. And after a while of driving, I noticed that there was um, a crackling sound coming. I took it back in. They said nothing is wrong. And also it kept leaking oil or whatever it was kept dripping on my garage door floor and on my garage floor. So they um, they said it was just a residue from when the CV boot was broken. Well, after a while, one day I was driving, and I felt like I was hydroplaning. I took it back in, and then they finally said, yeah, there was a bolt broken. So they replaced that bolt on that arm, um, and off I went again. But the leaking would not stop, and they kept telling me it was the residue from from that um, CV boot. Mm-hmm. Uh well, I took it back in now um, about last week, and I was told now suddenly that the steel was uh, leaking okay. transmission fluid. Right. You know, Barbara. So did they did they fix that for you, or did they offer you to uh, you know? Uh, a, a, they fixed a, the bolt. They, they and they didn't charge me for that. But now they they tell me it's the strut. They are not going to fix that yet because it's not bad enough. But the leakage came from the broken seal, and I'm questioning now: is it is that true, or is it just a well, job that wasn't done right in the first place? Um, that exactly goes to one thing I was going to say when we were talking about warranty earlier. A couple things are happening there. You keep going back, and I would bet my entire contents of my wallet in the in the uh, in the credit limit of the contained credit cards. That you never noticed that CV boot leaking when you, when you, you never (laughs) noticed that CV boot leaking when you went to the dealership for that checkup and oil change. So I have two questions. Why am I seeing residual when I never saw the pre? Whatever, well, the problem I have with that. But hold, hold on, on, Dave. Okay. And then, and then the next question I know is, why in the heck didn't you clean up the mess? That's your job is replacing that axle boot. Yes. You you're supposed to wipe off that grease and clean that up. It sounds like a line of BS to me. Well, it, the thing about CV boots leaking is that it's not the kind of leak that you're going to see on the ground. It's not. It's it's a gooey grease, and when they leak, you're going 75 miles an hour because there's a crack in a boot, and it's kind of zinging, you know, on the side of the transmission and on the firewall and all that stuff. But it's not stuff that actually leaks on the ground. But it's not uncommon after a CV axle is repaired to have a transmission leak, which is going to be a drippy red fluid that has. This gets up. my blood. My blood pressure is <laughs> like cranked up right now because what they've done is they've. I, I'm just making an assumption, I'm making a broad stroke, but they pushed you off, blew you off, blew you off, and now it's the transmission seal. Well, guess what? That transmission seal, the shaft, axle shaft goes through the hole in the transmission and goes right across that seal. And it's got to be lined up and centered. And when they when they put that in and they didn't line it up and they drug that new axle across the seal or they ripped the old axle out of the car and tore the seal on it, they're the ones that caused that problem. You are so, pumped up. Yeah, so if they're not going to step up to the bar and take care of your car for you like they ought to, it's time to find another shop. Yeah, you're in Scottsdale. It's pretty easy. You got Whitey's in South Scottsdale. You got Air Park Auto Service in North Scottsdale, up in the Air Park. And if you're anywhere in between or work somewhere else, go go. It's time for a new relationship. I think that's. I got a little cranked up. I mean, right, <laughs> right. Well, well, I would do this. I would do this if you're just talking to a service writer there at the shop. Uh, I would uh, I would go in there and I would ask for a manager because. I, we always say, Matt, hey, you got to go back to the shop and see. And, and I know she's been back three times and all that stuff. And, you know, third time you're out, and I kind of get some of that. But if you haven't moved it beyond the guy at the counter that's just kind of sweeping it under the rug and not telling his boss, because if that was happening to my shop and I didn't know about it, ooh, I w- you know, 
heads would be rolling. I would want to know something about that. But sometimes it is worth it. Just say, this is, you know, you can write a note or send an email or whatever it is to them and then see how they want to handle it. And if you don't feel confident with that, just just go down the road, go find another shop. If it starts at the top, well, now you know you got a problem. Yeah. So, yes. So, some, it just doesn't feel right. I get fired up about that. Uh, no, I didn't get... feel right at all. I mean, it's not, we'll, we'll see cars in my shop all the time that they just got their CV boots replaced or they just got new axles. Now they're at the transmission shop for a transmission leak. And it's something that happens, and it's not necessarily. You just got to be real careful when you're sliding that axle into the transmission. And it, it does happen. And you know? I'd be, oh, my gosh, I'm just biting my tongue. The, I can't know. I don't know if you can find a Honda that doesn't have leaking axle boots on it. The inner axle boots and all on I say all, and I hate to say oh, just all Hondas do that, or all all Lexus, or all Toyota, but but they leak. A lot of times we reband them. I anyway. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna answer a, a a text real quick, and I think this this goes for our fact or fiction. But is labor covered under warranty? Well, not in everything, and it really depends. La- warranty is one of those items that needs to be negotiated at the time of purchase. When we're talking about a 12 month, 12,000 mile warranty is standard. Yes, labor is covered, and I, I, I you know there is a couple shops that say hey parts only or labor only for 90 days. Those are kind of archaic warranties. But 12 months, 12,000 parts and labor covered absolutely so it's time for fact or fiction this one this fact or fiction for today came up at the bbb when we were we were reviewing cases the other day and it also came up for one of the neighboring shops where he did a repair on a gentleman's car the gentleman left and then something else something on the car wasn't right where he needed a uh alternator or something so he goes and has it replaced at this other shop, and it costs him uh, in excess of $800, and he believes it to be the first repair shop's fault. So he goes to the first repair shop and says, yo, me 800 bucks." So the fact or fiction for the day is that if you get something repaired and it doesn't go well and there, you think there's another problem, you can go to another shop, have them do the repair, and then submit the bill to the first shop. Fact or fiction? Can you do that, Matt? You sure can, <laughs> but you, you can, but I wouldn't expect to get paid. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so the the there's a bigger answer to it. And we could use Barbara's case, for example, with the Odyssey. The, 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 the example that you cite, Dave, the guy just – he had a repair done and then something else unrelated went bad and somehow he's tied it back that he thinks it's the other shop's fault and it could have been and we talked about that is there a rule i don't think there's a rule but you you need to go back a, a rule of of just being having an above board transaction you need to give the the shop the opportunity to confirm or deny it's a warranty coverage. It's not a rule but it definitely is a precedent in our business. So if you have a problem with your car and a repair that was done, you need to go back to the shop. You can go have it fixed somewhere else but you can't ex- expect the shop now, the first shop to pay the bill because it, you're spending money without them knowing about it. You got to go back, have them look at it. Now, if you go back and in in uh in Barbara's case three times and they can't get it right, well, you know, now you're going to go get it fixed somewhere else and you may be sending them a bill uh, w- with some uh, legal documents or something. Well, and in the BBB, when we when we mediate these these cases and these concerns, we, we take that into consideration. We think, you know, if you've been back three times, it's a loss of confidence. Mm. And, and can those people really? They've nope. been given an ample opportunity. I'm sure they're capable of fixing that seal on that transmission and identifying that. But are they blowing it off to the lube guy and, and, and how's that happening? So, yeah, you need to go back to the shop and have an honest conversation with them and, and uh, work. And shops, good shops do good things and reasonable people act reasonable and take care of business. Well, we've got George in Maricopa and another open line or two at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR car guys on the Bumper to Bumper radio show. <laughs> It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. 
We're celebrating, and for good reason. Yep, 2014 marks the 20th anniversary of Keiko Roofing here in the Valley. And they're proud and humble to have been trusted for all these years by you, their loyal customers. Year after year, Keiko has over 50% of their business coming from referrals or repeat customers, and 98% of the customers continue to say they would refer Keiko to a friend or family member. For that loyalty and trust, we all want to say thank you. Keiko is proud to install peace of mind by using only the finest materials with their most skilled workers, all backed by the industry's best owner's pride guarantee. If the roof on your home or business is over 10 years old, call Keiko for a free checkup and financing options. 602-944-4600 or go to keikoroofing.com. They're crazy about quality. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. All righty, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. He is Dave Riccio. And as always, Saturday from 11 to noon, we are here to help you with your car. Today we're talking about warranties and what to expect out of your car warranty. But really, it's whatever you want to talk about. The show is about you. And we have got a very, very patient George waiting. And Dave wants to play something. I, I do want to play Dave? something. My favorite line, and I think about the lifetime, some of the lifetime warranties, and uh, my favorite line from any movie is Tommy Boy. You know? Let it rip. Hey, if you want me to take a dump in a box and mark it guaranteed, I will. I got spare time. Well, it's, it's true. You can, what do they say, lipstick on a pig or, 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 or dip a turd in gold and it's still a turd, right? If you want me to mark, take a dump in a box and mark warranty on it, I will. So there is some sparkle dust warranties out there. Be aware of those. All righty, Dave. We're going to get the very patient George from Maricopa with the 2006 Chevy Silverado. What's up, George? Hey, uh, my uh, truck's uh, out of warranty. Um, I got 185,000 miles on it. I do most of the maintenance and make work on it myself. And uh, I've got one that's stumped, got me stumped. I do a lot of research on the Internet, you know, and that's how I learn learned a lot. But anyhow, I am getting a problem fueling my pickup truck. Um, I don't know if the fuel pumps at the gas stations are getting stronger and stronger, uh, which I kind of doubt. I believe I've got some type of canister problem under the hood or the back of the fuel tank. But when I go to fill up the fuel tank, it seems like I cannot barely squeeze the trigger before it pops off like I, like I had a full tank. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Well, there, there's something happening in that fuel filler neck. There, I don't, have, you ever had to, have you ever replaced the fuel pump or had the fuel tank down, or, mm-hmm. or did this happen after a recent repair? No, negatory. This is just something that's gradually gotten worse. I'd say it started about 135,000. Now we're 50,000 miles later, and it's getting, it's just progressively gotten worse. Well, the, this, the air pressure is not escaping there. There's something happening. It's got a vent. It, it, there's, it's got a vent in that filler deck. I don't think the canister uh, will have anything to do with that. The canister is more designed when the car is running to help assist the engine to draw the fumes off the top of the tank and burn them through the engine, not not to assist in filling. So I'd be having a good hard look at that fuel filler neck, make sure it's not damaged. There's a there's a tube. You know, those run down in the wheel well a lot of times. We'll see damage. Maybe had a blowout at one point, and that filler neck got got dented or kinked. Uh, sometimes people have to take the fuel pump out to replace the fuel pump. I'd be having a real hard look right there. Hey, George, thanks so much for the call. We're going to go with Jeremy in Phoenix. It looks like he's got a 
2000 and something Toyota 4Runner. Go ahead, Jeremy. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. Hey, so I bought this 4Runner a few months ago. Um, I took it home, checked all the fluids. Everything was good on it. Uh, drove it for about a month, and then I took it into a shop, um, a local uh, local masters of uh, stopping power. They are. <laughs> and uh, I, did, I didn't want to name anybody. I like the way you so, handled that. That was excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so anyway, I brought it in for an oil change with a coupon, and I asked if they could check all of the fluids because I just wanted to make sure everything was, you know, was pathetic. Um, three weeks after the fact, um, driving down the road, it, the transfer case started making noise. I took it home, put it up on lift block, checked everything, and that's what it was. I lost the bearing in the transfer case. So I pulled the drain plug, and I got about three or four ounces of fluid out of it. Um, I called the shop back, and the guy, I mean, right off the bat, the guy was really rude with me and, you know, told me basically to take a hike and go go screw another shop and um, really made me mad. I called the corporate office and explained it to him. The guy at the corporate office tells me, well, I'm sorry, we don't even service or fill transfer cases. I said, well, you know, I, I was clear with the guy at the shop. I wanted all the fluids checked, and when they gave me the keys back, he said all of the fluids have been checked. So now I've got a, a blown out transfer case on my truck. Mm. Um, but, is there, or have, have, you, have you guys experienced anything like that with any shops where they'll just, you know, they'll take no responsibility for something like that? Well, I mean, unfortunately, it does happen, but did you have them? Did they specifically drain and refill it? Did they service the transfer case, or it was one of those no. uh, broad streets? No, we, we checked it all. Right. That's exactly what it was. It was, a, it was a basic oil change, and I asked if they're if they're under there if they could just check everything. And they didn't. They didn't ask me if I wanted, you know, you know, for an additional twenty dollars, we'll do all this other stuff. They just said, yeah, no problem. We'll be happy to do it. Well, th- this goes. Uh, I mean, a lot of ways that you know, check everything. I don't know what that means. Air, everything to me might be. Air, is everything different to them, Dave? I've, I know you've got some ideas, and it just. I, I've seen this, and I recently went through this with a customer that drove down here from Tacoma, Washington, where she was in, and they had a free inspection. She said, just check everything, you know, and so they said, yeah, it's all good, and, and she left with the car, and she, two weeks later, she's at my place, and the thing is just puking transmission fluid, and well, they said they checked everything, and unfortunately, I think that gets thrown out there so much. I love when somebody, you know, for you, it's going to be really hard to prove. And that's going to be the problem. So if you have a problem with the shop, it's going to be hard to prove that that didn't happen because it was in conversation and all that stuff. So what we do is, you know, check this. Yes, it was full. Check this. Yes, it was full. There should be some sort of inspection worksheet at the shop. Maybe then go back and look at that. Dave, yeah, well, and I think the I think Jeremy what really is you're just out of luck. It's just it's just you, it's just you've learned the lesson, I guess. And it comes up, Dave, we probably don't have a whole lot of time to address it, but the inspection. And we'll have to, it's a whole other topic whole of the show. show of, inspection. Uh, of what do you check and what is everything. And, and when they say they're going to check everything, what is that? Okay. So. Well, thanks for joining us, and we hope you have a safe Labor Day weekend. I'm Matt. You're, he, you're I'm Dave. Dave. He's I'm Matt. Matt. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Hi. This is Greg LaFonsi of Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. Long name, right? But we have a short, simple goal. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority, and everything else takes care of itself. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved. ADS is a family-owned and operated state-of-the-art repair facility that has an expert staff that for the second straight year has earned the coveted AAA Top Shop Award as one of the best shops in the nation. Just east of I-10 on Channel Boulevard. Find us at AutomotiveDiagnosticSpecialties.com. Is your love of golf driving a wedge between you and the missus? The Arizona Biltmore Golf Club has just the solution. Introducing the Couples Golf League this summer. Bring your better half for a night on the links with other couples. For just $30 per couple, you and yours will enjoy nine holes and a beverage every Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Play all summer and qualify to be named the season's champion couple and take home the grand prize. What's not to love? Visit azbiltmoregc.com for more information. Hi, Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission and co-host of your Bumper to Bumper radio show. Did you know that one out of every four transmissions is replaced in air? Transmissions are the most complicated 
complicated part of your vehicle and misunderstood by so many. At Tri-City Transmission, we diagnose over 200 transmissions every month. We know transmissions. Don't be a victim of transmission malpractice. Protect yourself with knowledge. Download our free tip sheet, Top 10 Reasons Transmissions Are Replaced in Air, at TriCityTransmission.com. That's TriCityTransmission.com. The lazy days of summer are coming to an end, and the crazy days of back-to-school, daycare, and kids' sports are upon us. Hi, I'm Matt Allen, owner of Virginia Auto Service. Don't let servicing your car add to the chaos of your busy schedule. Live or work in Central Phoenix? Virginia Auto Service is right next door at 7th Street in Virginia. We'll pick you up and drop you off at your home or office. And for over 19 years, we've been Central Phoenix's trusted solution for auto repair and maintenance. Check us out at virginiaautoservice.com. <laughs> 